Greetings, BUSN 1360 Software Apps for Business online section only. So I am speaking only to our fully online uh, BUSN 1360 that started back in January. So hello, today is March 16th, Monday, and I'm Joan McGrory. I'm Dr. McGrory, your instructor. And so we've done some videos like this throughout the semester. And in light of the college-wide announcements with the coronavirus, I thought it would be a good time for us to touch base. And just so that you know, you know, we're working through all this together. So if you would give me a couple of minutes, please watch the entire video so that you just feel comfortable hopefully um, as we progress through the course and just talk about any uh, potential scheduling impacts since we are a fully online class we are really ideally positioned to just continue working forward so here's what you know let's start off with what has not changed what has not changed is that our class has always been online and so it continues to be online. There's no requirement to meet. You're just gonna keep on completing your online assignments in accordance with the class schedule that you have, all right? Um, college resources, such as computers, our college Wi-Fi, internet connection, we're still open. So, you know, consider doing your work in the college library if you need access to a computer, the software, that type of thing. The Academic Support Center is still open, great source of help and support. Um, you know, and, and you can also use any of the computer labs on campus that are open. Now, this is, you know, we've been experienced with this. We are a fully online class. I, I thought I would stop and let's look at pause here for a moment and look at our schedule and help. So let's go into our class. This is the online. And I know you're really familiar with this. If you're not, make sure that you're going to content and keeping an eye on our different modules. You know, there'll be a SLO practice test, SET instructions, SLO things coming up. So make sure you're always just kind of keeping an eye on all these things in the content. Uh, very helpful is under getting started. And I apologize, it's a little bit of a crazy day, so lots of emails popping up. Um, under getting started, um, we are gonna look at the schedule, which is, is here, but, um, well, let's go, yeah, let's, let's go to the schedule. Okay, so I clicked on syllabus schedule in my IT lab. Of course, there's our link to the syllabus. No changes with the syllabus. Here's our link to our schedule. We can go ahead and click on that. There is a PDF version of it down lower, which might be nice. Which one is gonna be a little easier for us to read? Well, we can use this online one. All right, so look at all this work that you have completed. Isn't this great? I mean, don't, don't you just feel a sense of accomplishment? You really should, because look at what you've learned. Word, all this, you know, writing a term paper and those kinds of things, doing uh, mail merges. I mean, you have learned a lot. You did the capstone grader. You've gotten into Excel. I need to grade your um, Excel workshop too. That is on my list. I'm gonna give you that feedback as soon as possible. And Excel is a very desirable skill in the uh, workplace, so that's great. There's our spring break, right? And we're coming out, we just concluded spring break. That was the 9th through the 15th. And what Dr. Hall announced in her town hall meeting was that it would extend through this next week um, so that teachers who are teaching face-to-face -face could move their content online. So in other words, the classes are not meeting this week so that the instructors can, you know, find tools and things to do online. But for our class, we're already online. So there's, you know, we don't have that delay. We don't need that because the content's already there. So uh, no sense in halting for, you know, or getting behind on our work. And I think you'll see as we progress through the schedule, we really have just the right amount of weeks in the semester to cover what we wanna cover. So what we don't wanna do is get into a situation where, for example, we took this work and combined it, you know, where we had double work in one semester. So for example, if you were taking this class in the seven week format, that's what we would do. We, we would do two chapters in a week. It's a little nicer. I think you can learn a little more deeply sometimes. Different people are different. 
if you can continue to follow, you know, one chapter a week. So I'd like to continue progressing in that manner. Uh, you can see your next due dates for your Excel assignments. I have seen that many of you are already working on those. Um, we'll finish up Excel by the end of the month. That's due, if, uh, I don't know if you can see that on my screen, but uh, that's due by the end of March. Um, then you'll have another uh, capstone project there, your Excel capstone uh, that you can go through. And um, then it you know, will lighten, lighten up a little bit because then you'll turn the corner into PowerPoint. And so hopefully have some fun there and learn about. PowerPoint is a very powerful tool. There's lots of uh, things that you can do, business applications for PowerPoint that you may never have considered. So anyway, that will take us through the end of April. And then, you know, we really wrap up in that first part of May. And so notice some of these due dates, uh, the SLO quiz, the fifth, and then uh, the project PowerPoint badge grader project uh, is due the seventh. And so there's some overlap there, okay? So that's what it takes to kind of get to summer break. And it's just, you know, working through that schedule. So I don't see a need to change this. We have our content fully online. I think we're okay there. Um, you know, one of the things to think about with, with that schedule is we uh, look at the syllabus maybe. There is no change in the syllabus. As I click on assessment and grading, um, you know, this takes you to, uh, first of all, a very quick how many points, 600 points throughout the semester. A detailed you know information about each one of your assignments but perhaps you would want to scroll down and very quickly look oh and I had 600 up there I must have forgotten to update it I apologize 570 570 so I have a little uh, error where uh, I got out of sync there keeping those two uh, numbers in line and you know, you've completed attendance quizzes, you've completed discussions, you've created your My IT Lab, you know that you're steadily working on pause quizzes, and you know, if something comes up, you know, and you miss a quiz, well, that's exactly the type of thing that the drop grades are for. So if you missed one quiz, you did poorly on one quiz, your lowest quiz grade at the end of the semester will be dropped of your My IT Lab simulators, your lowest grade, only one of them now, you know, so you gotta kinda think about it, will be dropped. Um, of all those cases, you know, that you're doing, you did for Word, for Excel, there'll be cases for PowerPoint where you go through, you know, with the book, there's one drop grade. See that drop grade there? There's one drop grade there. Um, your graders, now we, it's important to stay focused on completing those graders because notice that there is no drop grade, no drop grade, okay? And then um, towards the end we kind of saw that SLO quiz and there's instructions in pause about that. So, you know, in order to keep these drop grades in the syllabus, it's important that we don't start eliminating chapters, um, that we don't, you know, cut assignments because that would then change the points and, you know, we'd have to reevaluate some of this. So I think that, that we just keep moving forward, right, through our schedule. Uh, we were fully online from the get-go, so I think we're okay there um, within our class. And that's really what I wanted to touch base with you about. Final notes here. Um, let me return to my slides. Final notes. If you need help, you know, the same support resources are there for you. The campus is open. Uh, there are computers with internet access available on campuses, including the remote sites. So if Maxine Smith or, um, you know, Whitehaven or one of our remote centers is closer to you, by all means, you know, go there. The academic support centers are on all the different locations. You can go to the library uh, to find them and they can help you. If you're having trouble saving files, you know, creating folders, for example, on your flash drive or on your computer, um, you know, don't walk in and say, I'm here for a tutor on um, software apps for business because to my understanding, they do not have a tutor specifically for that, but I don't know that that's what you need. It depends on the nature of your problem. If your problem is, I'm having difficulty playing this video that's embedded in my ebook, I'm, I'm having trouble with that, 
they can probably help you with that, I really believe. Um, if you're saying, I don't know how to submit multiple files into PAUSE, and I just want to do it all at one time, they can show you how to do that. Uh, that's no problem. So they might be able to help you decipher instructions. You know, it's kind of the two heads are better than one, oftentimes. Maybe there's some little obstacle that if somebody could just show you this, just point to this, just tell me this, that you would be able to complete your homework, the Academic Support Center is really great for that. So, you know, don't hesitate to use them. And, and here's why I say this. It's not for the purpose of brushing you off. It's really not. I am glad to answer your questions. I answer them by email. I can do videos like this to address very uh, specific, you know, this is where I'm stuck, this is what I'm not understanding. Oftentimes, the more detail you give me about what, where you're stuck, what error message, the better I can respond to you. But um, I am not, you know, I'm not on campus 24-7, and our, my office hours may be different from the time that you're doing your classwork. If you're working all day, I might have already left for the day, and you're on campus saying, I need help, hey, just go over to the Academic Support Center and see if you can get help there. That way you get the help you need in time to turn that assignment in so that you're not missing the points. And that's really important because I, I know I know you want to do well. For many folks in this class, this is your last class and you're hopefully looking uh, towards graduation quickly approaching. And I want to help you meet that goal, reach that goal, and the Academic Support Center does as well. And oftentimes they're uh, kind of the Johnny on the spot. They're the one who's there. And um, just to, to save you that delay, I want you to get the help that you need, all right? Now also, speaking of help that you may need, what if you are experiencing an error message in my IT lab, right? You're trying to use the grader and something is not working. You know, Pearson has a great technical support. You can call them, but in pause, under content, there is a special little section here. There it is, My IT Lab Help. And if I click that, look right here, Pearson 24-7 Technical Support. I can click that link and it takes me to kind of this list and I can click contact Pearson 24-7 technical support and you know there's their operating hours and a quick link to you know the Pearson support. Now I, I, this is not magical or genius if you are in working on my IT lab assignments you'll see links to their technical support on you know the sign-in page at the bottom of some of the assignment pages so you know they do have links throughout so just click on their links and contact them for that uh, technical support help I also want to emphasize if you are struggling you know you've got a grader project coming up and you ca cannot remember how do I do those graders well I sent you a video talking about the graders you can go back and look at that and again under my IT lab help how to complete a grader you know, this is going to give you extra information. How can I upload the same file after I've made changes to it? You know what? That's in the video. Those are things that I have talked about. So you've got that information there. Um, in fact, two links there, right? So very quick resources for you. These are short videos, and I think now they, they've actually Pearson changed it. I think that ends up now being the same uh, video. All right. So um, Pearson Technical Support, Southwest Technical Support. You have forgotten your Southwest password. You can't get into the email. You have heard that there is a Microsoft portal that Southwest students can access, and you're having trouble there. You know, stop by, talk to the technical support. They're also uh, typically available from the library. If depending on which, uh, like if you're at a remote site, if they're not there, somebody can point you or help you get the assistance you need. So, you know, maybe my starting point might be the library, or simply call them at 901 333 help. Okay? So I hope this just reassures you that we're continuing on with our schedule. If you know, because we are fully online, we're not meeting, so we're able to just continue, and that will help you uh, avoid getting behind and staying on track. So you know, I know this can be stressful time. I hope this helps alleviate some of your stress and take care of yourselves. You know, be good to yourself. Know that you have those drop grades for emergencies. That, that's what they're for. And, you know, just do your best. And we're all learning and we learn at different paces. 
if you get frustrated, that's a good time to push back. You know, just remind yourself that we all learn, right? <clears throat> None of us knew how to drive a car from the beginning. None of us knew how to ride that bike. We all had to fall off. And it is easy to get frustrated and we're all human and we've all had those moments of frustration, you know, still have them, right? And that's okay. And the important thing is that you don't let it scare you off. You don't let it make you feel bad. It doesn't mean that you're in any way bad. It just means that you need to maybe go back and read that instruction again. You need to play that video because the, the wording of the instructions is confusing and if you could see it, you could do it perfectly. You need to stop by the Academic Support Center and have somebody just point you in the right direction and then you know something just clears up those resources are available for you. You know, you need to email your instructor because you're certain that this was, you know, the due date was different or, you know, something, you, you didn't understand something. Um, I'm glad to answer those questions. Not a problem at all, okay? So um, I hope that helps and um, thank you for your time. And, you know, we'll continue to talk throughout the semester. Thanks, folks.